Hello and welcome, I'm Billy York and in this SNP I will show you how you can join multiple data sets to correlate performance data to find the exact process name that is taking up your CPU usage on a server. The language we'll be using is the KQL or Cousteau query language which is used in Azure Security Center, Windows Advanced Threat Protection, Azure Application Insights, and Azure Log Analytics which is what I'll be using today. First, we do need to add some custom performance counters. If we go to our advanced settings tab under our workspace and we click on data and select Windows performance counters, I've added process percent processor time and processor percent processor time. Now let's jump into the advanced query workspace. First, in most monitoring solutions, you can alert on a threshold for CPU usage. Sometimes it's 90, sometimes it's 95, or sometimes it's customizable. In this instance, I'm going to show you this first query. What we're doing is querying the perf table where the counter name equals percent processor time and our counter value is over 90%. And in this instance, I'm including processor and instance name total because I've already added the custom counters and I only want to return the results for the total instance name. In Log Analytics you can use Shift Enter to run the query and that's what I'll be using. As you can see I've returned back several results of computers using over 90 percent of their CPU. From here in most monitoring solutions you would get an alert and someone would need to log on to that server and find the process or you could run a diagnostic script to return back the results. In Log Analytics, we have the extra performance counters that I've just shown you how to add that will return back our process name. Next, this query will return back our process names by querying the perf table again, where time generated is less than 30 minutes from now, and our object name is process, and our counter name is percent processor time, and I'm excluding total and idle from the results. As you can see under the instance name column, we can see that we have different process names being returned. However, if I sort this by counter value, you can see that the top result is 1490. What Log Analytics is doing in this instance is aggregating the total count of our CPU. For instance, HVO1 has 16 CPU cores, therefore it has a total possible counter value of 1600. So we will need one more data set to join with this counter value to get a percentage back. Again, we're querying the perf table where time generated is greater than or equal to one hour ago, where our object name equals processor and our counter name equals percent processor time and instance name is not equal to total. We'll sort that by instance name and we will summarize by CPU count equals dcount instance name by computer. You might have noticed that I have added a new field here called CPU count. What this is doing is creating a new column that we will return our D count value back to. So as you can see, my HVO1 server does in fact have 16 CPUs and our other servers have a various number of CPU count. So we have three different data sets, but now we need to join them together. I'll switch over to my full query where I've used the let operator to define three different variables CPU threshold at 90, time at 10 minutes, and process count is 5. Each of these variables I'll be using in the, the various data sets below. Next, our first data set is almost exactly the same as our first data set from the first set of queries that I showed you. The only differences are I've added let top CPU equals perf and then I've added a project at the bottom to project only the field names that I want to return back in this data set. Also note that I've added a semicolon on the end of each line. This tells KQL that the query doesn't end at this particular line. The next query is exactly the same again only I've defined let top process equals perf and again I've added a project at the bottom to only project the field names I want to return in this data set. Again the let find CPU query is exactly the same as the query that I've previously shown you. I've made no changes here. Finally, we will join them all together with this bottom query. One thing to note, in KQL, if the join is not defined, 
it is an inner unique join. You can define other types of joins just like you can with SQL and other languages. Starting from the top, I will join the find CPU data set with the top CPU data set on the computer name key field. Next, I will join top process on the same computer name field, and then I will use the extend operator to define percent processor used, whereby I will divide counter value 1 by the CPU count. And in this instance, counter value 1 is the 1400 field that I pointed out before that we're going to divide by the CPU count to get the percentage of the processor being used. Next, I will use the summarize operator with the average function of the percent processor used. We'll define that by computer, object name, counter name, CPU count, and then we rename a few fields to make the data easier to read. One thing to note, whenever you use the summarize operator and the average function together, it's going to produce a new field name called average percent processor used, which I'll show you below. In the next part of the query, we use a where statement to define process equal equal process. We also, as part of that where statement, are using an and. Average percent processor used is greater than 25%. We then select the top process count by average processor used in a descending order. This will sort the process count by the highest used processes. Next, we project only the fields we want to return in this data set, which are computer. Next, I'll use control A to grab the full query and shift enter. As you can see, I have one server that's running handbrake as the process and it's been using an average of 87% of the processor over the last 10 minutes and the total CPU used for the last 10 minutes is at 92% and that's how we can use advanced queries in the KQL language to correlate data. Thank you for watching.